So, I rescored a Zelda trailer. With the release of the new Zelda game, there was some gameplay footage released quite a while ago, and I got challenged to compose my own music on top of that, which was really challenging since the last Zelda game I played was Twilight Princess. <laughs> Back on, I think, was it? Yeah, it was the Wii. It wasn't the GameCube version, it was the Wii. So that's been a while and I haven't played Breath of the Wild, I haven't really seen anything of it. So the only thing I remembered from the soundtrack that I kind of got with like Spotify plays and stuff like that, piano and a lot of reverb. So like a piano ostinato kind of thing, a pedaling thing and lots of reverb. That's the only thing I knew about the Breath of the Wild soundtrack. Apparently that's been quite a lot of the soundtrack, but that was what I started off with. Yo. Editing me here. So as you've seen in the intro, there is seven layers now. When I filmed the video, I didn't have as many layers yet, so that changed after the fact. The contents of the layers themselves are basically the same. I changed up a few little things here and there, but yeah, if something in a video might sound a little bit confusing, that's because I changed things after the fact. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, back to the video now. So I had this idea with this little piano paddling thing, which goes like this or actually like two ideas i think i started off with right so i did left and right hand so i started off with this idea and then the right hand going up a little bit and i felt like that also needs a little bit of low end in there so we have the low chord, just an octave on the low end. And a second chord. That's basically all it is. I've used native instruments piano for that. We got the native instrument giant, which is a really cool one. You can go all the way up to really hard to really soft. And I just left it in the middle because it worked. Add lots of reverb on top of that. So my go-to reverb for these kind of things, Raum, I know. And I chose the ground version, not the one that comes up before. So yeah, that's basically the thing I started off with. Piano has another thingy with lots of reverb. And then I thought, well, it does need a little bit of percussion. And I've recently discovered in a spotlight collection of native instruments, we have spotlighted basically different parts of the world. And I thought like some world percussion thing would work well with that. And I had in mind this Indian kind of bloopy stuff. So that's what I went for. I have three different Indian percussion instruments. We have the kol, which looks like this. And I love this, ooh, the bloopy one. This is so cool. I've been in love with this sound since probably like Guado Salam, Fun Fantasy X, especially since, well, we've done the podcast on this now, Rafi and me, the Tales of Hybrid podcast, check it out. But yeah, the Guado Salam is full of these kind of bloopy sounds, which I enjoy so much. Then I thought like, well, I want this to sound like a jam session in a way. So I added two more layers of that. One of them is I'm gonna pronounce this so wrong. I have no idea about Hindi, but Kanjira, something like that. Which is this little thing, Kanjira. It's Japanese pronunciation, whatever. So this has a little bit more of the low end vibe, also with lots of reverb on top of that. And a third one, the Gatsan. Which is also kinda slightly bloopy, but has these cool high-end attacky thingies on there. So all three together make up for something that sounds like a jam session. A bit of a chaotic one, but I enjoy that. And also whatever this says, I forgot what I did what did I put here. Oh another one! It's apparently from Africa. What are you? It's a jambe, right? So yeah, that's a percussion altogether. And if we get back out of the solo map. This is what the whole thing sounds together. This is the first layer. And 
and you can listen to the whole thing on Spotify if you want. I'm gonna release it there, as well as in packs, so if you enjoy what you hear right there, head on down to the link in the description, and you can get these exact loops, perfectly looping for your game, if you like that, or even if you just want to explore it. Alright, moving on to the next layer. So the next layer builds on top of everything we have here. We have the first melody coming in. Da, da, da. Which is a mixture of strings, as you can hear, I'm sure. And a little bit of horns in the background as well to support the whole thing. I tried to put in these shark teeth right there, which is basically automation of the mod wheel to make a bit of this. So basically, the intensity of the string line going up. And the horns. I'm just there to support the strings in the back. Let's loop that as well. And together with the strings again. It just gives texture to the whole thing. I love horns. Horns are such a versatile instrument. You can use it on anything. You can have it in the back to support or even be its own line. So horns are always great to use for everything. And we also have these little flutes attacky things. I don't know why I put them there, but apparently they're there and they're gonna be left there now. Playing the same line, but with just this little, this little attacky staccato vibe. So yeah, that's a thing that's there for reasons I can't recall. And we got a contrabass playing the low notes, as well as some low brass. Just really far back down there to give a little bit of grit to the low end, which I enjoyed. So the low end. Counter bass and low brass together. Sounds like that. With also a little bit of an automation right there. As we can see here, a similar thing to the other things to have this rise and fall in intensity. Just a little bit in there as well. To give more movement. And I just like the sound of it a, more, a bit more. Because it does sound a little bit more real. So I think that's it with the second layer, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, right. We got these in there as well. A little bit more percussion. This is usually the action strikes, the native instruments action strikes, which are usually used for like big orchestral percussion trailer stuff. But I just wanted to have a little bit of this low end bloom in there because the others don't really have too much low end. These ones, they do have a little bit. But to have this steady low end pulse in the back, I really enjoyed that. So that's why I put that in. Alright. Let's see, have I missed anything in this layer? Right. It doesn't even play. <laughs> it's supposed to play. Why is it not playing? So, about the harps. This was just another version of... I have no idea where I saved my sample libraries to because I'm so really organized. So, yeah, I reloaded the Hollywood harps from East West and this is what they supposed to sound like. Just a little bit of sparkle up top, which I really enjoy. And also here. With, with the eighth notes.
right, and with that, back to the actual video. Woo! So yeah, that's gonna be it for this layer. Let's move on to the next layer, which I'm going to use this one before we go to the next one that sounds a bit more intense than this one. I want to move on to another layer because for this one, I thought... So we do have a little bit of a sky section in this video as well. And I wanted to give the sky section a different vibe compared to the other sections. So we got this first stuff, these first things, which look like that. So the big wide open spaces with not a lot of stuff happening, a little bit of a village vibe here in the back. And we have these islands here in the sky. These are the things that I wanted to score a bit differently. So if we move on to a little bit of a next part, we have this organic nut here. We have this organic part that fits on top of that with a little bit more action, maybe some people around in a village or something. But still this really big, broad vibe to the whole thing. And then we got this little section where Link is targeting a boulder kind of thing. And there's a mechanic in there where you can reverse the whole thing. So something fell down, but Link has some sort of game mechanic where he can just basically touch this thing or put like a, I guess it's his glove, a spell on it, so it can reverse to where it used to be. So in that case, it goes back up. And I want to give this a little bit of a different vibe. If we go from this layer, from the calm and still organic one, when we go over, to the sky section. I want it to fade and have this thing going where it moves upwards into the sky. I wanted to give it a completely different vibe. So it's all electron electronic and also we got fives in there. So quintuplets. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One two three four five. 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 I want to give a completely different vibe, and I feel like fives are such a unique vibe in and of itself. They're even stronger than fives. One two three five. One two three five five. And yeah, I felt like this is a cool little scene and a cool little idea that could work with a different section, like a sky section. So this is what I had in mind for this. In this layer, we got a lot of things that changed. We should have the hearts in there, which apparently we don't, for reasons I can't explain, and I'm not gonna try. We got the choir, which I think was in the second layer as well. Yep, it was in the second layer, it's the same choir. This was in the second layer as well. So cool big chords on this. Then we got a little bit of a hi-hat thing that emphasized the fives groove. So it's a fives. If we put in a metronome. This is what this would sound like. Just wanted to have a little bit of this high end percussion vibe in there as well. We have this synth, which I've used the Spire on, which is a preset, which I think sounded cool. And of course, also loads of crystallizing on this one, which is a cool plugin by Sound Toys. I really like using that one. We also have some pizzicato strings. Double eleven octaves that basically supports the main line, which is now played on synth. Like that. With just a little bit of expression with the pitch wheel. I like that. Just I wanted to give it a little bit of a human touch, I guess. This plays the whole way through, same melody as before. We have low end, one that evolves a little bit, 
which is a Native Instruments Reactor preset from Monarch. I really like that one. This has such a cool analog vibe to it. Coming from someone who has no idea about analog synthesis, but yeah. And we also have this little one with a little bit of an attack and a steady bass going all the way through. First, I only had something like this, which is a steady bass, but that was a little bit too much because it just stays on one note extremely strong. And I didn't like that all too much. So that's why I chose to combine these two. Because now with the movement, it does have a little bit more a vibe of a contra bass of a string kind of library, which of course it doesn't, but more than just a steady bass sine wave with nothing on it. So I decided to go for both of these. And then in the second half, we got this top ostinato coming back in. Which I might have just forgotten to put to take out, but it's there now. So back to the whole thing. And I think that covers all the elements we got in this. So this is the size action. And the pizzicato violins, or not violins, it's basically jelly and counterbass, I guess, or jelly and violas. I just wanted to have them because it sounds cool, but I just wanted it to have a little bit of this plucky feeling, which this synth sound doesn't have. I could have just taken another synth sound layered on top of that, or like add some sort of attack to this. But I thought like, let's keep it a little bit organic to have a bit more connection to the other parts. This is why I went with pizzicato strings. Which I think adds quite a bit, actually. That's a cool texture. So from this very, from this second organic part, I actually recently, before recording this video, wrote another part, basically just took out a few things, but after this part, I want to have a little bit more, I wanted to have a little bit more than we have here, but less than the fight part, so I went with this, just a little bit of more exciting percussion, we got the melody doubled up with more brass. So it's three layers of brass. Four, actually, if you count the extra horns. Which I think is easy to hear, but that's what it sounds like. All of them together. So we have this first layer up there. Which is cool. Then we have the second layer that's even higher up. But if you listen really closely, if we go up here... Okay. So we got this high layer on top of that. If you listen really closely, it changes timbre here. Because these two are too high for this library right there. And probably in general for brass in that section, but... It just changed timbre a bit too much for me. Because here you have this strong trumpet line in there, but now it's missing. Which I felt like I didn't really like all too much, so I added another brass library on top and just pushed these ones up a bit stronger. So all of these are all of these are the eight Dio libraries. We have the Majestica brass, I think, on both of these. Yeah, the power muted. I could have just used these on one track, but whatever. I wanted to have two different tracks for this. So I can manipulate them differently. And then I put the intimate studio brass as well as the century brass trumpet quintet on top of that with the sustained stuff, which is this. Which on its own sounds weird. Especially here then. But if we put it on top of everything, it's just a little bit of a sparkle on top, which I enjoy, especially here. Because it fills up that space that the other library can't reach right there. And also the horns in there as well. Horns are great. 
So that's the breast section. I removed the Indian percussion and stuff like that for that as well, as the Native Instruments one. I also removed the piano for this layer. We still have the flutes in there for reasons I can explain. <laughs> we have another tremolo contrabass in there. And the second one, which probably is Jelly that I didn't rename. Yeah, that's Jelly. Uh, contrabass. Both of them used by 8 d again. So that's the low end and also the Spiccato one. Just to give it a little bit of a pulse. Which I think is cool. Because in the next layer, it's also going to be underlined a little bit with the brass. With the percussion, I mean. And we get the first set of orchestral. Oh, actually, it's right there already. First set of orchestral percussion. Which underlines the spiccato line. Which on its own sounds like that. Which is quite tame, not as like trailer-like and big and all that, but still cool little low, uh, cool little high-end attack. Not too much low-end. I like that. And we got the Majestica percussion in that as well. And the choir. The choir got bigger. The choir sounds like this now. So bigger chords and everything. Looks like this. Especially this chord. It's huge. I love that. Big, big choirs are so cool. Alright, so after this part, we got. So basically, I wrote this part in because the fight scene part, the next one, sounded a bit too strong for me as a transition. So, if we move on from this to the next layer, that would sound like this. So this. We get a bit more excitement in everything. So the bigger choir is in this as well. And then we get the strings. Same thing here as well. Just built on top of that and the percussion as well. The brass is also the same. But now we have this little thing here. The really, really attacky low strings. Yeah, that's actually low strings. That's a Colenio, 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 I guess. Colenio. From the Majestica as well. Colenio. Which is such a cool vibe. I love that. I wrote a whole track starting with this. With this is the main focus. And yeah, we got the piano back. With now, instead of the... The piano was like this before. So just regular eighth notes, but here in this next part, I wanted to step it up. We had the fives in the other part, in the more electronic one, and I wanted to have a bit more of a stressful vibe here as well. So let's go for triplets. So it's the same thing, the same notes played, but in a triplet vibe. So three notes instead of two. And of course, the low end is way stronger. This isn't just a really softly played now anymore. It's BAM! Which I think is always such a cool thing. Especially like with the wide spaces of love. The low hits. On a piano as well. And we have more percussion as well. These are the action strikes again from Native Instruments. And yeah, I suppose that's it for that layer. So more percussion, triplet vibe, and the piano in the top ostinato and really attacky. Low end of the piano. And also the Colenio attack strings. And now on to the main course. 
The big fight one. So, we got the piano ostinato. Double up in strings. Which gets such an epic, strong vibe. We have another layer of orchestral percussion high ends. The cymbals on top of that. With a gong and high cymbals. Ah, that's just such a cool vibe. As well as some rolls, a little bit of this kind of thing right there. And we have the main melody doubled up as a huge choir. So let's start off with the choir. We got three different layers of choirs on top of the brass and string section that are singing just some random words to make it sound a bit cooler. We got the Imperium. We got another Imperium for reasons I don't remember. Oh yeah, we got an ensemble and then like diverse kind of thing. So yeah. And a third layer, which is the Lacrimosa Choir. <laughs> I think I just made a mistake here and wanted to do a different choir. Never mind, this is in there now. So, if we combine that with the brass, that's a combination of the three layers of choir and the four layers of brass to make that sound really epic. We have the percussion like this, which is the first one we had in the beginning which works with the spiccato strings, the high end ones, which are... First starts off with a gong, because I wanted to have something a bit lower in the beginning, which sounds like... this, and then we have the high one, the higher cymbals, which we have here as well. And here we have this... one, two, three. That's just such, I mean, it's such an easy trick, but I just wanted to have some more high end excitement in there, which this really brings. And we have a combination of three layers of strings. So first we got this triplet ostinato and spiccato of the Majestica strings as well. But this felt a bit too chaotic for me, so I want to have something a bit more controlled with the century violins on top of that played in spiccato feather whatever that exactly is i have no clue i could look this up but i don't know doesn't matter i like the sound of this because that's a bit more controlled and then i also wanted to have some pizzicato on top of that because i just like the sound of pizzicato it gives a different kind of attack that i thought would suit the vibe really well here as well so all three together sound like this So if we throw all the strings together, this is what the, just the strings sound like. This in and of itself already sounds really cool and big. So yeah, that's all the layers of this track for now. Let me know what you think of this track. You can listen to the whole things in the link provided down in the description. And I'd love to hear feedback. I'd love to know how you think I did with this track, because this was a really cool challenge with all the different elements I could have put in there with all the different Zelda vibes and I feel like this suits the whole epic vibe of a Zelda adventure quite well. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and if you enjoyed this, how about watching another one? Somewhere around here, floating here. Alright, see you in the next one.